You're listening to Blue Monday, the podcast for, about, and by America's small business owners. To get future episodes as soon as they drop or apply to be a guest, visit dms.blue. And you're listening to Blue Monday. I'm your host, David Summerfleck, a digital marketing specialist and project manager with about 20 to 30 years experience working for different agencies and publishers for a long, long time. My guest today is Kyle. Are you still there, Kyle? Yes, I'm still here. How are you doing? All right. Thank you for for being with me today. Um Let's get going and just kind of jump right into it. Can you please start with basically an introduction as to who you are and what you do, your services, you know, where you are in terms of things? All right. Well, I'm Kyle Weckerly. I'm based out of San Antonio, Texas. Um, I'm a certified ghostwriter. And what that means really is that I've taken a certification course to teach me a methodology on ghostwriting. But ghostwriting in and of itself is helping others write their books. Now, I specifically focus on coaches and consultants helping them write their business book. And it's not just a book to get on the bestseller list, to get a bunch of fame. It's really a platform book to help them market uh, services, products, their expertise maybe, uh, to establish themselves uh, apart from their competition. And then uh, also, you know, if they just want to uh, secure speaking gigs. A uh, book is a really great way to do that. And so mm-hmm. uh, when a client comes to me and they say, I want to write a book, you know, we sit down, we really uh, d- are basically download their brain onto paper. <laughs> we, re- we record and transcribe all this. And then we start sifting through all, of, all the information together. And I organize that and we start writing out each chapter and then we start editing. And then we all, uh, you know, I'll give it to them to, to read and hand off to a trusted friend so that they can get some feedback. And then they'll come back to me and say, this is what I think we should do. And I said, okay, let's do that. And then we, you know, we get proofreaders and all that. And then I eventually code the document. And then when we're done with the project, you'll have an industry standard manuscript ready for you to go. And then we can start discussing if you want to do traditional publishing or self-publishing, the pros Mm -hmm. and cons of each, and then how best to approach those uh, those paths that you want to go on. Wow. Okay. So, okay. I'm taking notes, by the way. Yeah. I'm taking notes as well. I always keep a, a pad nearby. Yeah, I'm, I don't know what I would do without one. So are you open to writing in different fields or areas areas of expertise, d- writing in different ways? I'm just curious about that. Oh, definitely. Uh, the reason why I say coaches and consultants is just because those are the people who have approached me the most. And so while mm. I may have more experience in that specific niche or sub niche, if you want to call it that, um, it really can apply to any type of book. The certification course that I took, we did both mm-hmm. fiction and nonfiction. And so uh, some people have actually approached me and wanted to do a fiction project. And of course, uh, they didn't pan out, but I mean, it's not something that's outside of my wheelhouse. Uh, it's just in my experience, fiction projects are not mm. as plentiful as the, the business writing projects. And so that's why I focus more on the business books. Okay. Because there's a couple of things there that you just said, and I wanted to backtrack. I wish I could do rewind and, and hear what you just said. Again. I'm sorry, am I talking too fast? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm thinking about, I'm listening to what you're saying, mm-hmm. but I'm also thinking, how can I help you at the same time as I'm listening to what you're saying? So I'm cr- trying, basically doing two things at once while I'm listening to you. Mm-hmm. So ghost writing and you said coaches and who else uh consultants uh even business mentors uh those people who specifically help others to get a leg up get more experience guide their journey on a specific either career path a spiritual path or a life path mm. um those so kind of I coaches be, good so i i would have a million projects for you to work on there you go um <laughs> but the, the the question is do mentors and coaches have money? Yes, that is always the question. Um, generally, and this is are they I've, a good market for you? Uh, I would say so. Yes, I've, I've. The reason why I say coaches and consultants, and that those are the the 
biggest audience to approach me is because they they want to put out a book they want to establish themselves as not just another coach and you know they they don't want to just throw that Mm. word around and i'm not sure if this is happening in other cities but in san antonio we do Mm. have kind of this excess of people who call themselves coaches now that's not saying that they don't have that we have those here too yeah we don't have we have those yeah and everywhere let me tell you they are everywhere and i can talk about that too if you want to but please continue yeah and so um there are some people who are just calling themselves coaches and they're really just trying to you know get get money or get you know a, a nice little side gig going on and there's nothing wrong with that it's just you know if they want to mm-hmm. put together a book um and have me do it for them what I essentially i'm doing when you really boil it down to its mm. bare bones of what ghostwriting is, is I'm taking my time sitting down and writing your book uh, as you, know, you, the author. And so if I'm to do that, I can't really do anything else to, to make money. I'm not independently wealthy, sadly. My family is not, <laughs> not rich. Um, right. So I, I can't just take projects you know, on a pro, pro bono uh, basis or a, a, at a very reduced fee. So they're-, and they're you should. Yeah, they're, of course not. Um, so there has to be something coming in for me with this project to a justify the time I put into it, and b also you know it's it's a skill set. I've put money and time and a lot of effort to learn how to do this. And so you know if I were to go to a doctor and say, well you know what you know I, I could take out my appendix myself. Why am I paying you to do this? You know just give me a knife, mm-hmm. I'll do it right here. So it's it's kind of that that mindset of, that I I'm feel I'm combating a lot. Yeah, you well. Yeah, and then that's something that if you provide a service, you see that all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I my experience without getting really, really into it is I worked for different agencies, different marketing agencies, ad agencies, publishers for like 20 years at least. Mm-hmm. And in between, I would go and do my own freelancing. And over the over the course of all that time, I started out, you know, obviously working with some truly nightmare clients. Um, there was one lady who said that she was a public speaker for Fortune 500 companies. And I'll never forget, you know, I got in the car, I drove across town to go meet her. It took like an hour and a half with traffic to go and meet her at Starbucks. She's like 15, 20 minutes late. She comes in there. There's nowhere to sit except right next to a stinky trash can. And I'm sitting there trying to talk to her about her business and her goals. And then some guy walks in who she says that she knows and their eyes connect. And it's like something from a romantic movie. Yeah. And she zones out completely. We come back. We talk some more. Turns out she has no audio of her ever speaking anywhere to anyone no photos that I could use in any way, no written content, a logo that's like an animated cartoon logo, which is utterly ridiculous. And I'm sitting there thinking, suckered again. Yeah. Right. But whose fault is it? Is it her fault? Because in her mind, she's not doing anything wrong. She doesn't know. So I'm the one who's sitting there, you know, I wasted an hour and a half to get here. It's going to take me an hour and a half or longer to get home. And I'm wasted like that, this amount of time sitting here talking to you. Mm-hmm. And what is your budget going to be? A hundred bucks? Because she doesn't know. She's got nothing to promote, right? So it, that was for me a big educational experience in screening clients. And that's when I began to put more and more processes in place so that now I'm semi-retired and I'm older, but I also, I work with much few, many fewer clients but they're better and they need what you can do. And that's a big word that I would make bold and underline and italicize is need. And if they don't need it, then they're going to dilly dally. It's going to take them six months to get back to you because they don't really care. It's a, it's a game or it's just something to pass the time. They're sorry. They initiated it because the need isn't really there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying that directly is directly relevant to you. I'm not saying it is or it isn't or it isn't. Mm-hmm. We don't really know yet, sure. um, but but that's something that I had to learn. And then I learned about, co- you know, using contracts, using forms, and then what SEO should I use? Because I already knew how to do SEO, but I didn't know how to make it specific. Who do I really want to target? And I'm still refining that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're always doing that. Um, so let's dig a little deeper 
here. So before we started, you were saying you're working full time. Mm -hmm. And if it's okay with you, I'd like to dig into that. And then what you're dead, how you're able to dedicate time to this, to the writing. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. And I wanted, wanted you to get into it because you know, you can, you know it better than I do. Of course. All right. So, um, well, I've, every morning starts with me, you know, getting up and getting my, my children ready, either since it's the summer right now during this recording, um, usually just getting them breakfast. If it was a school morning, then it, getting them ready for school and, you know, two little girls. And of course it's, it's not always going to be a smooth morning. Um, so getting them to school and then getting on the road and, and dealing with San Antonio traffic mm. to try and get either to, yeah. you know, the, the home office where we're at or to the, the job site where we're going to start working that day. And so I usually allot at least an hour of, of time in traffic. And um, some days it's it's OK. You know, I, I, I beat that time frame. But, you know, other days I'm spending hour and a half, two hours sometimes if traffic is really bad. Uh, and then I'm going to be looking at that on the way home as well. Um, just to get home to either, you know, pick up uh, one or two of, of my uh, daughters from school, get home, uh, figure out what we're going to be doing for, for dinner. Sometimes we have a, a meal planned for that night uh, or it's leftovers. And so trying to get that ready so that way they can both eat, um, you know, mm. I'm spending time with my family. Um, you know, I, I want to every day, uh, you know, have that time specifically for them. Um, and then when they go to bed, that's when I can uh, finally uh, get to work on, you know, things I need to do for the business. Sometimes it's recording a podcast episode. Sometimes it's writing up a bid for a potential client or, you know, just, you know, those, those mm. little things that go, go along with, with the business. And so I'm usually doing that from if on a good night from about 8 p.m. to midnight and then I get to bed. Okay. So. Hmm. Okay. So we want what you're doing to be more focused on getting specific results. Yeah. What, what would you say is the number one problem? Is it not doing what you really love to do? Is it wasting too much time with people who aren't a good fit for you? How would you explain the number one problem? You know, like if I could wave a magic wand mm -hmm. and say, this problem is gone, Kyle, now you should be clapping your hands. What would it be? Uh, I would say if I could be very specific about it is establishing a marketing strategy to where I have those ideal clients coming to me on a consistent basis. Um, okay. Because, you know, ideally I want to have at least three clients a year because I can handle three of those projects a year where I stagger start them. I don't want to start all three at once because that's just too much work to do at one time. Right, right. But, you know, start one, get that up and going. Two or three months after that, start another one. And, of course, do that uh, until the end of the year. And then, of course, when one project ends, have one that's either going to start right at the end of that one or within mm -hmm. the next month or two. And, again, keep that, that staggering going. So having that marketing strategy uh, in place so that way, you know, it's not necessarily autopilot. I mean, I know it, nothing can it, truly be automized with marketing because I, I have to be able to connect with these people personally. Cause you're not going to just, you know, look in the, uh, the classifieds and say, Oh, look, here's a ghost ride. Let's go hire him. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you know, you can to an extent you but can, but I, in my experience, it's never really worked. Um, you know, when I've sent out bids on, on writing sites that way, it's the experience has never been a good one. That's why, that's why I say that. So uh, yeah. just a marketing strategy so that I know, um, you know, at, at any time, okay, this is what I need to be doing today to, you know, keep my, either my SEO up or, you know, a pay-per-click uh, campaign maybe, or, you know, maybe do um, some speaking somewhere if that, if that's a, a yeah. good idea or will be a um, efficient and, um, you know, the return on it will be, uh, will be good. So, you know, just figuring out what that strategy is and then getting that up and going so that, you know, of course, um, I'm talking to, you know, the right kind of client, um, other ghostwriters and I, we've, we've talked a lot about this and we've identified, we want Holy Trinity clients. And those are the clients mm -hmm. who are, you know, uh, rich, right. And ready. You know, they, they have the money to, to pay for what we do. They, they right. understand what a ghostwriter is, what it does and 
more or less what the process entails. They don't have to have a clear idea, but they understand this person is going to be doing serious work for me. And so, you know, that's why I need them to do it. Uh, and then, of course, ready, meaning they're able to start within the next month to six months. Um, so that so way you have to be organized. Yeah, maybe not necessarily uber organized, um, but, you know, say, OK, well, I've got time in my schedule here. Let's start the project then and we'll get it going. Um, because to me, organization, um, some people hear that and they're like, well, I'm not organized, so I can't do it. I'm like, no, no, you don't need to be super analytical and organized. I can take care of most of the organization for you. I just need you to understand uh, you need to do you know, X, Y, and Z during the project in order for it to be right. um, productive. But they have to be organized to the extent that they know what they want, mm -hmm. at least somewhat. Yeah. You know, I want to work with a professional, serious uh, adult ghostwriter mm -hmm. to give me a serious professional book mm -hmm. um, so I can be perceived as an authority in my arena. Um, I value it sufficiently that I'm willing to pay what this person is worth for the value that they're providing, but also they know what to do with uh, the book or content after you create it. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't know what to do with it, then what, what's the, what's the point? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and that will reduce the value in their eyes of the perceived value. If they don't know what to do with it, if you could write a brilliant book for me, mm -hmm. but if I don't know what to do with it or how to promote it, I'm going to look at it like that old saying, you know, uh, uh, pearls to swine. They won't know, you know, it's like giving a, a diamond to, you know, my pet rabbit. She's just going to roll it around on the floor. Mm -hmm. They have to know what to do with it too. So it's who you're talking to, what you're talking to them about, mm -hmm. and the value of what you provide. So what have you tried? Uh, well, at first I went to a lot of networking events. And, you know, people were interested because, you know, there's just not a lot of ghostwriters, especially here in San yeah. Antonio. Um, or people who do that specifically. There are uh, freelance writers not here anywhere. who um, talk. Not anywhere. I never meet them. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I never meet them. I understand there's I a lot crazy. in New York and Los Angeles area, which doesn't surprise yes. me just because there's a lot of uh, content coming out of there or those are seen as centers of content. Um, but there are some freelance writers here in San Antonio that I've talked to who do offer that as like one of the services that they offer, but it's not the main service. So- um, you know, I get a lot of attention that way, but usually those projects, if if it does uh, lead to a meeting to talk about a book, you know, the minute I mention cost, they kind of like, oh, well. It's real. Yeah, I, 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 I can't pay for that. I'm like, well, you know, I, no, I can't work for free. Because it's just, yeah, and it drives you nuts, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It does. Um, I've also yeah. done, um, I tried to do a lot of social media and not that social media is bad. It's just, you know. Of course, the people on social media, it's like another networking event. They're, you know, once they hear the cost, they they kind of turn tail and run. Um, now, mm -hmm. with the podcast um, that I've started, and this started back in the beginning of June, or when I officially launched it, um, you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I feel I'm really getting to know these people. They're really getting to know me. Uh, we have great dialogue. And then at the end of every episode, I say, well, I also do ghostwriting. And so, you know, as a way of saying thank you, you know, here's a, a little discount that you can utilize to for ghostwriting mm -hmm. services in the future if you want to. Uh, if you never do, that's fine. But just remind me if you ever go with uh, me to do any ghostwriting. Um, you know, I was once a guest. And I'll put that in the bid. And, you know, nine times out of ten, they'll say, oh, well, I have a project I've been working on. I'll get back to you later. Mm -hmm. And so hearing that is great. And it, it shows that, you know, something's happening. And one of those guests is actually gone as far as to say we're going to start a project he just hasn't gotten back to me with a firm start date so to me that's okay. all that time and effort for that one client is worth it because a it's shown more um, returns than those other uh, endeavors that i've just explained and also b i feel it has a much better chance of creating that relationship between me and the client mm -hmm. to where they feel like they mm -hmm. can trust me with their book because writing a book is a very intimate process. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're letting this person kind of see the, the sides of you that you don't necessarily show to everybody, especially in business. And that's not to say that everybody is, you know, fake and fraud and they're putting on this persona. It's just, you know, if they're going to write a book and share their story, they're going to, you know, need to be honest with me that, you know, okay, 
I was doing this. I wasn't very good at it. And I had these doubts, you know, things weren't going well. And so, okay, now I know what your story is and we can tailor that to fit the message that you want to say. So. Okay. Well, I want you to send me your rates. Okay. And I'll $1 million. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, and I'm dead serious because I could, I, I I've got about a hundred books I'd love to write. Awesome. Um, and, and it's, it's it's always about organization, mm-hmm. scheduling the time, putting your thoughts in there. Um, so I could always use your help, and and I'm sure there's a lot of other people, and I want to get into that. Mm, definitely, I would appreciate um, that. So let's see here. So you tried networking. What else? Uh, networking, social media. Um, social media. Okay. I'm trying to remember because I feel I've done a lot, and that it hasn't really. Oh just direct cold emailing um, where I'll, mm. I'll identify a prospect who might, you know, benefit from it. And so I'll either find a email address for them, uh, or if the person is big enough and they have a, a large enough organization, I try and find their assistant and connect with that person to try and, you know, Oh, Hey, here's a ghostwriter who I think you might be interested in um, do that for them. I've also sent letters. I've literally written out physical letters and, and mailed them to a, a, a mailing address. And mm-hmm. of course I haven't heard anything back from those except for one. No, um, there, I've done that too. Yeah. There was a guy here in San Antonio. I, I knew he, he had the money. He probably had a, a book he could write and I was sending him letters um, about one a month, I think for about two or three months before I got an email back because I had my email in the letters and it was from mm-hmm. his assistant. He said, you know, thanks for the information. We just don't need your services right now. So, you know, that subtle way of saying, stop, stop spamming us with the junk mail. So, hmm. Let's, I mean, you know, it, I, I, I have a lot of empathy. I mean, as a web developer, as an SEO a uh, programmer, someone who's done digital marketing and worked for all these marketing agencies for so long. You know, if people listening to this, you know, can hear it and they're thinking, well, how does this relate to me? Mm-hmm. And, you know, from what what you're saying, you know, I know from firsthand experience, it's it's very hurtful. Uh, whether whether you say it, whether you feel it that way, I, you know, I can definitely say from my own perspective, you know, you're trying to basically put forth this service that you know intellectually, mm-hmm. you know from your experience it can help people make more money, but they're not interested. Mm-hmm. And it's it's because they don't really see the connection. They don't see the value. So you can tell them, you know, look, I can help you build your business. They're not interested. Mm-hmm. Some of them don't want to build their business. Uh, you know, I was a, a certified business mentor for SCORE off and on for like 10 years. I'd reach a point where I couldn't take it anymore and I'd go away and then I'd come back a, a month or two later. Um, and SCORE is a division of the U.S. Small Business Administration yeah, where they advise yeah. small small business owners. Most of the people are much older than I am uh, because they're mostly retired and I'm semi-retired. Thank God I don't have to stress about money as much as I used to. But I still, you know, I'm not Donald Trump, whatever you think of him. But I don't travel the world and go crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something that you you really have to – it's not so much what you can do, but it's how you package it and how you communicate it. And I'm trying to think of these two – stories that are right on the tip of my, my, my tongue. There was a woman I knew a long time ago when I lived in Denver, there was a woman who was a commercial realtor. So she would take people who wanted to open a new business, like in a mall or a strip mall or whatever. And she would hook them up with commercial realty. And she had a girlfriend who was a web developer. And I knew about this because I used to go to a lot of networking events and she came up to me and she said, you know, Hey, you know, what do you do? And so on and everything. And she actually looked at my work and approached me and said, your work is really, really good. It's better than my girlfriend's work. So I'd like to talk to you about it. Well, anyway, I looked into it and it turned out her girlfriend was basically selling empty templates to these commercial businesses the the websites were basically black text against a white background, almost no images at all. They had no real tangible return on investment value to the business owner. Hmm. 
But because the business owner technically doesn't know what to look for, they thought they were getting a great deal. Mm -hmm. The web developer would sell these empty websites for five grand a pop. Mm -hmm. And they had no value at all. But because she was such a great business person, she basically lied and said, look, we're going to make you number one at Google. <laughs> You're going to get so many phone calls. You're going to get so many more emails. This is so exciting. Oh, my God. This is going to be so exciting for you. You know, get really excited. Get ready for your business to ignite. She would get them so excited that they would be happy to spend $5,000 and then as soon as she got the money and gave them their blank sites, she would change her phone number and disappear. Wow. And so I knew about this because her girlfriend came up to me and was telling me this. And, you know, I'm thinking about partnering with someone else who's a little bit more ethical and does better quality work and so on. We talked. I felt apathetic about it because of what was taking place. So we both kind of drifted apart. Um but I learned a valuable lesson from that. And the lesson is obvious that the girlfriend was making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Let's get real. She was making a lot of money hand over fist. But what she was doing was unethical. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is separate what worked for her, but what was wrong. Mm -hmm. So what worked for her was being a salesperson. She was very enthusiastic. People make decisions not based on logic, however much we would wish that they did, mm -hmm. but they make decisions based on emotion. So you want to appeal to emotion to get people excited about what they could conceivably do if they worked with you. And so the realtor's girlfriend sold this emotional excitement. OK, there was a great, great TV show a long time ago that came out called Pitchmen about these people who did did the infomercials. Billy Mays. And they're selling you. Yeah. Yeah. Billy Mays. They sold you crap that you don't need. Mm -hmm. You don't need the, the, the two headed uh, toothbrush or whatever it was, <laughs> you know, the ear cleaner out or whatever it was, but they got, they were so enthusiastic that they were a joy to watch. And you, you were buying, not the product you're buying the emotional reaction to what they were showing you. I want to feel like Billy Mays, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And God rest his soul, it later came out that he was on, on cocaine half the time. Oh my gosh. He gets so fired out. Yeah, he got so fired up because he was high on something. <laughs> and, you know, but the point is, he got so excited. When I watch great speakers who I admire today, uh, Tony Robbins, Les Brown, they're great speakers, mm -hmm. but they get you so fired up emotionally. You're not sitting there listening emo uh, intellectually. You're sitting there taking in the emotion. Les Brown tells you, get passionate, you know, get hungry. He always says that. Mm -hmm. Tony Robbins would jump up and down. He's seven feet tall. You know, he gets you so caught up in this emotional uh, uh, impetus of what he's doing that people are willing to go and spend money that they, for something they may not necessarily need or may not even benefit from, mm -hmm. you know? And, and one of the jobs I had, one of the companies I worked for was, you know, how you can make a million dollars with no money down flipping real estate. Oh yeah. And I learned a lot from them. I learned a lot from them. And one of the, and they would, uh, they took me down to these speaking events where they would get these uh, uh, people in the audience so fired up about what it would mean to them if they could just sell one house, just one, <laughs> what that money would mean to your life, how you could buy a speedboat and you could go and gamble in Vegas and, you know, beautiful girls would get all excited about you. But they were selling the emotional dream, the allure of this. Mm -hmm. And that's, and then that's how they could get them to go and spend $500 on a course or some nonsense. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying what you should or shouldn't do, but in a way I am. Yeah. So I have some suggestions and some ideas for you, but this is all about need mm -hmm. and need is the, def the defining term um, that I would underline and italicize and, and bold because you have to have the need for this. And if you don't have the defined need, then 
you're you're just like the potential client. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you aren't saying, well, I really need to do this, then they won't do it. And when I was a business advisor or mentor, whatever the hell the term was that they wanted, I did this for SCORE. I also have done it for uh, one or two other nonprofits. And I backed away from it after about 10 years because it was just overwhelming. And after 10 years, I realized it didn't matter what the business was. They all had the same problems. They didn't have enough sales. Mm -hmm. And they all knew what they had to do, but they just weren't doing it. And that was the thing. And I, I don't like the, the thing where you have to break them down to get them to see what they're doing wrong first. That's not my approach. I don't like that approach. But in some cases, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And maybe I will do it more with the podcast. But the reason people aren't doing what they need to do is because the need isn't there or they're not convinced the need is great enough. So that's really key. And you have to look at that from like a Rubik's Cube. That applies to you as much as it does to the potential clients you're talking to. And for anybody listening to this, whether you own a hair salon, whether you're a lawyer or a doctor in private practice, a therapist, whatever it is, if you're not making the sales that you need to be making, it's because of how it's being presented to your ideal consumers. They don't see the need. And instead of talking about the tools or the widgets or, or the bright, shiny objects, you want to talk about how you solve real problems, real pains that they're experiencing, and you can make those go away. So I don't talk about web design or SEO. When I talk to a client, I talk about, do you want to get more phone calls? Mm -hmm. Either yes, you do, or no, you don't. So how does this relate to you, Kyle? Can you see where I'm going? Yes, definitely. So for you, there's a million suggestions I could make. I can't make you do them. I would if I could, <laughs> but you have to see the value in them and then tinker with the how to part. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, the need is you get to do what you really enjoy doing. Yes. You get to call the shots. You get to work with who you want, when you want to do it on your terms. Mm -hmm. And it's more than and that. A, I mean, I love writing yeah. a book. I've, I've self-published a couple books. Um, I've done a lot of, you know, just story stuff. And I really enjoy that creative side, um, you know, taking an idea or a concept and presenting it in such a way that people want to sit and listen to you. Um, and that's what yeah. I love about the books. And, you know, there's a lot of nonfiction books that I've been reading. And I'm like, this this is a good writer. I really like how they present this. It makes me interested in something I may not have been interested in before. And so that's, to me, that's really what I enjoy doing the most is doing that and also doing it for other people. I really enjoy helping other people. Um, previous jobs that I had, I worked for a food bank and we were helping people who you know didn't have money enough to get the nutrition that they needed to live healthy lives. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, yeah. here I am helping them. And it felt really good for me. And I know that sounds selfish, but you know, I'm, I was helping them get the food yeah. they needed so that they could live healthier lives. So I'm like, I'm getting a lot out of this too. I really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of the, the gist there. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to look at what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it and who can benefit most from it. Mm -hmm. So how committed are you to resolving this? Very committed. I mean, I've been doing this for two, three years now. I mean, officially as a ghostwriter, I started doing the, um, the freelance writing, content writing back in 2015. So probably more like four years, but also I've been writing okay. at first writing was more like something I did. Like I would try and come up with stories. And so I'd write them down. I didn't really focus on writing as a hobby until after I was out of college and I graduated in 2008. So the economy tanked and, yeah. um, you know, I was, trying to look for a job i was frustrated because you know I, I had this degree that ended up being worthless i got an art degree which you know i, mm. I now feel is not even worth the paper it's printed on um mm. but then uh you know the writing you need to know i i just want to i mean I, I don't mean to interrupt sure, you sure, but course. you really should know that there's a lot of people out there who are in the same situation or worse off mm-hmm 
you know, I have a degree in English. I was an English teacher. I was a college professor and it was all ego. And really there's no future in it. You know, I enjoyed teaching, but I hated the bureaucracy of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd get 40, 50, 60 kids in a classroom to the point where, you know, they're not going to do the homework you give them. And there's nothing you can do about it. The parents aren't going to help you. And if you flunk them for not doing the homework, you can only flunk so many kids. After a while, they're going to let you go. They won't renew your contract because now they're getting they're not getting the funding. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a catch-22 on, on top of catch-22. So there's a lot of people out there who have degrees that they're not doing what they really wanted to do. They're underemployed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've known people with doctorates. Uh, there was a lawyer I talked to uh, a few months ago who uh, she was an immigration lawyer and then an, another type of lawyer on top of it. And she was very upset that she was getting ready to go take a job at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And because she just could not get enough clients mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, pay the overhead. And, um, you know, I tried to, to help her. I told her what, you know, what we could do, but there was so much resistance and pushback. You just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Just, I just had to get off the phone. But my point is that there's a lot of people who are in the same boat or worse off. So you're not the only one. You're not alone in that regard for whatever that's worth. You should really know that. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. And I, and I just wanted to say that, you know, I have a degree in English. I, write like crazy, but I'm not an English teacher anymore. I'm not an English professor. I don't sit and write books all day long, even though I probably should. <laughs> I'm much harder on myself. Um, you know, so, and I could talk about writing all day long. I mean, if I write nonfiction, it's got to be as good as Vonnegut or someone else, or it's, it's, what's the point. Mm -hmm. And that's a catch 22, but I want you to really look at who you're talking to, first of all, mm -hmm. and why you're talking to them. Who can benefit most from what you, uh, Kyle, what you provide? Mm -hmm. um, if they can't directly benefit from what you're providing, then you really shouldn't be talking to them mm -hmm. because they don't need it. They might act like they're interested. They might be nice, but it's like dating. They'll just tell you, oh, yeah, you're a nice guy, but we're really not that into you. It's just waste your time. And, and you can only take so many hurtful experiences after a while. You just kind of get fed up. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't want that to happen. So I would tell you, talk to people who can really, truly directly benefit from what it is that you uh, can do for them. And I want you to really focus in on the value of that. So I, one of the things I'd really like you to do is become a lot more of a of an expert in the value of ghost writing, content marketing, and the value mm -hmm. of content marketing and ghost writing. So I want you to really, really focus in on that and 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 be very informed on that so you can speak about it and be an expert in it. Does that make sense? Definitely, yes. How would you do that? Good question. How would I do that? Do you have an idea of, of how to? Well, I mean, I, I do know a lot about ghostwriting, of course, because I'm in the business and there are um, stats and figures that I know. I mean, I could probably throw numbers at you about, you know, how, you know, X amount of people had written a book. And so then of that X amount, Y found a positive uptick, like something like 84% mm -hmm. found a positive uptick in their business. Right. Of course, I don't know. I can't so, remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I have them written down somewhere. Um, right. Of so I want you. Benefit. Right. Exactly. That's a big, big plus. So I want you to become an expert on being able, let's say that, for example, that you were to walk up to Lee Iacocca. Okay. <laughs> Everybody knows who he is. Yeah. If you don't, you should, or you walk up to, um, uh, what's his name? Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah. who basically says the same thing over and over and over again every day. It's the same rah, rah, rah stuff, but that's his brand now. And that's how he builds his, his, his thing. I want you to be an expert in the science of content marketing, 
ghost writing. And so if you were to go up to somebody like Lee Iacocca or Gary Vaynerchuk, you could have an intelligent, articulate conversation about the value of content marketing and ghost writing to someone like him. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want you to be able to do that. So if that means going to Google uh, and I don't know if they still have Google scholar, but that used to be a search where you could look up scholarly journals. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they still have that. Yeah. They still have that scholar.google.com. Okay. So I want you to be really, really expertly informed on that so that you feel very confident and have like a, a PowerPoint presentation that you could put together on the value of content marketing and ghostwriting for corporate CEOs, um, influencers, mm -hmm. so local celebrities in your geographic area in general. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. I'm writing all okay. this down. So. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, I mean, if you want me to pause or stop, just let me know. I can go get a cup of coffee or whatever. <laughs> Actually, I have my coffee I'm right here. I'm dead serious. Okay. That's a, that's a... I don't. I'm Monster and Rockstar, Red Bull oh, and everything I, else. I don't like energy drinks like that. I, I just usually stick to coffee or um or Mio. Have you heard of Mio? It's like a little... I have. Yeah, it's like a, they come in a little teardrop thing and you just squirt it into water and they have uh, caffeine ones with caffeine in them. And so I'll drink those at the end of the day in the middle of the day or in the morning, I'll drink coffee. So I just, the taste of monster though, is just so ugh, repulsive. Gee, thanks a lot. <laughs> well, it, it, I guess it's an acquired taste. Wrong like answer. wine. I guess it's a wrong answer. <laughs> it's a, it tastes like wine. Yeah. Oh man. Um, no, but but that's fine. I'm just kidding. I, I like Earl Grey too. But um, I want you to really take kind of a, a long, hard look at that uh -huh. uh, and be able to do that. Because one way that's always worked for me, and I'm going to get into some of this other stuff, is remember, you've got a very, very valuable skill that can make a lot of money for the right type of audience. Mm -hmm. When people are not receptive, it's it's either A, they're not getting the message in a way that's relevant to them or B they're not the right kind of person. They don't, they just don't see the value to it. So it's one or the other. You can always fine tune how you present it to people, but you can also fine tune. Are they a good fit for me? What criteria do you use? So for example, for a typical web developer, freelancer, graphic designer, content marketer, you don't really want to talk to a hobbyist. You want to talk to a business owner who's been in existence for at least five years, at least. They have at least five employees. They've worked with a marketing agency or company somehow in some capacity before, so they know what you're doing and won't resist it. Mm -hmm. If you're not, if you don't have those minimum criteria, you're wasting your time. There's going to be pushback. They won't know how to budget. They won't be able to budget. So it's just, it's sad for both parties and for you, for what you're doing, you've got to be even more refined yeah. because the small business owner in general, they may not have a use for it. They're not going to even know what it is in a lot of cases, sure. Sure. you know? I mean, you know, somebody who owns a local restaurant is not going to be thinking about, you know, writing a, a book mm -hmm. or content marketing. They're not. I mean, no. it's sad, but they, they might have that potential within them, but they're just not going to be thinking about it. So who is going to be thinking about it? Someone who is a marketer mm -hmm. like me, yeah. someone who is an aggressive marketer, someone who wants to dominate a specific uh, niche like digital marketing. It could be uh, uh, an influencer who happens to be in your area or a CEO or a local celebrity or speaker, right? Someone who speaks to Fortune 500 companies, like a local speakers bureau. That would be worth it for you to target people who are in that group, hint, hint. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of want to fine tune who you talk to and how you talk to them and what you talk to them about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to go in some different directions and then I want you to ask me whatever you want. Is that sure. okay? Go ahead. Okay. Um, with where you're looking for work, 
Where do you look online? Uh, mostly LinkedIn, uh, just because it's you know the business social media, and so a lot of people are of course putting out their content as well. Um, but for me, it's. But I mean, oh, go ahead, sir. Do you, I, and I'm sorry for interrupting. It's just how I am. I, I don't mean to be impolite. Um, do you when you say that? Do you mean you go to LinkedIn? And you look at the job listings or that you're registered with them as like um, they have like a new service yeah, now. Where you're like a provider. Yeah, I, I do do yeah. Profinder. I do get Profinder uh, leads. Um, I've really only found one that yielded somebody who, yeah. you know, understood uh, what what a ghostwriter was and what they could do for them. They yeah. were interested in starting a project, but they didn't hit the third bell, which was they had the money. Um, but I mean, he's. I hate that service. I really do. Yeah. I hate it's it just... because I've used it. It's extremely impersonal, mm -hmm. extremely impersonal. And the thing is, people will say, I need a website. How much is a website? And my response is, well, what are you trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. How? I mean, how long, how much is a car? I don't know what your goal is. I don't know if it matters to you how you appear to others. I don't know if you travel a lot. I don't know if you have a family and you need more room. How, I mean, it has, you know what I mean? It has no basis in actually defining a need. So the problem with these RFP things where they just, just give me a number, they're looking for the cheapest possible price. And that's all they fixate on is the lowest possible price. So you really want to focus in on, on needs. So if you use that ProFinder again, don't even, you know, just say, hey, look, what can we do to establish a dialogue? You know, I'd be happy to talk to you for 15, 20 minutes and see if we're a good fit for each other. But what you want to do is focus in on, do you have legitimate business needs that you're trying to accomplish? And you're trying to accomplish those needs through the services I provide. But giving them a number or something, it's meaningless. They're just, they don't know what it is. They don't see the value in it. So you have to have an adult conversation with mm -hmm. them like you would with dating. Mm -hmm. You know, is there a need for this? Have you ever worked in marketing before so that you're familiar with how marketing works? If I were to write a great, brilliant book for you, what would you do with it? Would it just sit on your desktops forever and you'd never do anything? Do you circulate with people so that you could actually sell it? You know, that's a big, big, big thing. Uh, would they go have readings at the local Barnes and Noble or the local Books a Million? Most people won't do it. And you want to work with people who would. So I, I hate these. Um, I call them, you know, race to the bottom sites like Up Yours Work and, up yours. <laughs> and all this other uh, that's what I call it because that's what it is. I haven't is. heard that, but that is very accurate <laughs> with, from my experience with, that's what it with is. the website. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, look, who goes who goes to these sites? People who are looking for a vendor mm. and it must be this price, like Fiverr and everything. Well, look, I just need this done. So I'm buying a product. That's the way they look at it. I'm buying a product. I'm not engaging in an ongoing service. It's, it doesn't have multiple levels of complexity. That's not how they look at it. They see it as I'm buying a cheeseburger. So how much is a cheeseburger? Mm -hmm. And if you can't give it to me for $5, I'll go to somebody who will. And if you say $5, I'm going to look for four fifty. Yeah. And they're going to keep doing it until you get the cheapest possible price. Now, what does that do to actual service providers who give two shits like you and me? It's demoralizing. We don't want to do it. They're not going to use what you give them anyway because they're looking for an object, not a service that can help them. So I don't like sites like that. Sure. So what I would tell you is you want to initiate dialogue and just say, look, I'd be happy to talk to you. Let's use my Calendly link here to schedule a mutually convenient date and time. And you don't have to use Calendly. You can use Booked In. You can use a million other tools mm -hmm. like that. Definitely. And if you have questions, I'm more than happy. You can email me at dms at dms.blue. And if you want suggestions for tools, I'll send you a list as long as my leg. Um, but it's about initiating dialogue. You've got to get these intelligent adult conversations started. When I say adult, obviously, I don't well, yeah, mean, I know what you're you saying. know, like the, the, the serious yeah, conversation. Not, we're, sweet, not we're talking about ghostwriting right. here. This is what it's going to entail, what you need to do on your end, right, what I'm going to do right. on my end. And at the end, we should have right. this industry standard manuscript that you can go off and apply 
to you know either sell your your new widget, right. your new gizmo, your your product, or to you know set you apart as the digital marketer in your area, so that That's way right. people come to you That's and right. are willing to pay your prices because you have established your authority with that book. And it's not necessarily the book that right. does it; it's you saying, "Hey, I have a book, and it tells you all these things I do." And people will see the book and like, "Oh, I understand. This person has put." put in the time and effort to write a book about it that doesn't mean they're you know they're fresh off uh, or fresh out of college with a degree thinking oh i know how to put two numbers together to make four that makes me an expert no this this is a true mm -hmm. honest to god uh experienced expert who knows what they're doing in the digital marketing space and that you know that proves it with the book um and then of course you can use the book as, as other ways like to get on podcasts or to get speaking uh, right. speaking gigs or to just send to potential clients to say hey this is what That's i right. do uh you know you want to read on my story to see where you know what it would more of my personality what it would be like to work with me here's a free book you know Go go and read that if you want. If not, that's great. You can send it to somebody who really likes reading a book. So I love it. I love it all. And and I'll give you a great example. If you look at Bar Rescue, I don't know if you've ever seen that mm -hmm. show. Um, yeah. Yeah. So with the first thing that he did when he got on TV, the show became successful. How did they find him? Right? Do you know his story? No, I haven't heard. His, I've seen the show. I haven't heard his story okay. though. I, I love him because he's a guy who's older, just like me. He didn't become hugely successful until he was older, when he could implement the lessons that it took him a lifetime to learn. But he, he started out as a bartender. Then he was, he was the only person who kept showing up on time. <laughs> so they're like, hey, you're the only person we can count on. Here's the keys to the damn restaurant. Why don't you open it yourself? Open the bar. So he was a bar manager and a restaurant manager for like 20, 30 years. And he did it for all these different industries and all these different types of bars until he became an expert in it. Then he started speaking at these bar and nightclub uh, conferences. And he would, I don't know what he does to get so psyched up, but he's really passionate he's not about doing cocaine it. too. So he, well, I hope not. I don't think he is because he's an older guy. His head would probably explode. Yeah. But he he's really animated. He gets really fired up. So that appeals to the emotional part. You know, you can't fall asleep while he's talking to you. So people watch him. They get really fired up. They get really animated. He gets, he appeals to your emotion. And this, as soon as the people saw him speaking, someone came up to him and said, hey, I'm a producer. You should get a reality TV show. I think you'd be really good at it. He's not stupid. So he's like, of course. <laughs> the show took off. As soon as the show was on for a couple of seasons, what did he do? He went and wrote a book. He wrote a yeah. book. He went and wrote a book. Then he wrote a second book. Then he started speaking at Google. And now he's getting even more speaking gigs because, hello, he's on TV. He's written a book. Now he's got a podcast. So now he's even bigger than before. Mm -hmm. So that's the people you want to appeal to. Anybody with a podcast, and I hope you're writing this yes. down because I really want you to do it. Anybody with a podcast, God knows anybody with a reality TV show. Mm -hmm who's on a reality TV show, anybody who's a, a local influencer or local celebrity or mayor or politician in your area, you know, anybody who could benefit from increased, refined, improved exposure. That's what you want to do. And if they come to you and say, hey, look, I I want the book, but you know, I also want to get on the web. I also want this to be promoted on social media. Can you help with that? Definitely. Yeah. And if you say, no, you know, that's not my area of expertise lady. You know what you could do is say, yes, I can provide yeah. it. And then you think to yourself, Hey, I know a guy who's a master digital marketer. <laughs> I can outsource this yeah. to him and get white label services. Are you familiar with white label? I've heard the term. I, term? I'm, I'm blanking on the definition. I'm sorry. <laughs> white White label means that you get someone else to do the work for you and you have a white label on it. That's what it means. It's a term that we used to use in marketing agencies where basically you outsource. Mm, okay. Yeah. Because so the, um, this is the another book point marketing I wanted to. Um, that's another service I offer is 
uh, identifying you know, podcasts for one, but uh, just different outlets for them to market their book and finding purchasing agents mm-hmm. who will buy in bulk your book. So that way you can get those right. those sales up or at least out to a wider audience in more places so that you're not doing it all just on your own. I mean, of course, they're going to be doing a lot of the right. work themselves, so- but it's really to help them see what they can do with it instead of, well, now I have a book. I'll just put it on Amazon. Like, no, no, no. You can put it on Amazon, but there's so much more that you can be doing with it. So Right. Nobody will find it. Yeah. So you have to have someone to partner with for marketing. You have to have really different people mm-hmm. uh, to, yeah. to partner with. So I see what you're doing here, David. You're, you're, you're working your way into mm-hmm. a partnership, right? <laughs> well, cross-pollination is actually a marketing uh tool. And I think every, everybody should cross pollinate and I'm not working into a partnership because honestly, if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. And if you don't see the need or value in it, you won't do it. And it's also extremely difficult to form partnerships because it requires repeated communication. And this is why most small businesses go under so quickly because they don't do it. They're not comfortable doing it and they won't. So you can't make people do what they don't want to do. But cross pollination is not just me telling you, hey, digital marketing, SEO, online marketing, social media. I do these things. Hint, hint, Mm -hmm. Kyle. (laughs) You know, hello, McFly. It's not just me telling you these things. Mm -hmm. Right. Because statistically, the odds are you're not going to do it. But I'd be silly not to say it anyway, because you might defy the statistics and say, I'll engage this guy. I'll do a few emails back and forth. Let's see what we can get going. And, um, but most small businesses won't do that because they're not comfortable doing it. You got to come out of your shell. You got to have something to promote, but there's a million ways other businesses can cross pollinate. Mm -hmm. You could be a restaurant owner who talks to distributors. You know, I've never been in a restaurant in my life that has cooking classes, but hello, you've got a kitchen, don't Mm -hmm. you? You've got cooks and chefs right there at your beck and call, and you've got what are called slow days yeah. and slow nights and off seasons. Why don't you have freaking cooking classes to make money? <laughs> they won't do it. They just won't do it. And if you tell them to and, and help them do it, they still won't do it. They have to want to. They have to see the need and the value in it. And it has to be bad enough that it hurts enough that they'll do it. If you're about to go bankrupt, You'll have a freaking cooking class, won't yes. you? Because if it can bring in money, that will pay your rent. You'll do it. So I want you to make a list of, if you haven't already, make a list of who you should be talking to. Have you done that? Have you started that uh, yet? I do have some names of local local people. Of course, with San Antonio, we have the Spurs. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind writing a, a book for, for Tim Duncan or Greg Popovich or David Robinson. But what types of people? Um First start broad, then start specific. So what types of people, what types of genres or niches of people would I would be ideal for mm-hmm. you? Do you have that kind of list? Yes, I do have a list of marketers here okay. in San Antonio as well. Other kind of local mm-hmm. icons, people who really help small businesses or help others okay. with their business. But what I mean is not a list of people specifically, but a list of a list of types of people. And then from that, you can have another list where you're more specific. You see where I'm going? I just had a list of names. Right. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but I want you to have more and I want you to have systems and processes in place so you can actually start getting more results that you Mm -hmm. want. Okay. Are you okay with that? Would you like that? It's just, of course, like I said, it's, it's finding the time to do it. Um, so yeah, that's always something I do. So make a All list. Right. So make a list to do that. Uh, one of the tools I use is called Kanban Flow. Mm-hmm. Kanbanflow.com. Kanban Flow. So I have like a hundred lists on that site. Okay. And you can get a free account. It's free. They have like a premium version. It's like five bucks or something. And I use them all the time to just have a million different lists. So if 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 you think it's a good idea that can help you get more business and it's worth your time doing, then it's worth your time doing right and trying to fine tune, Mm -hmm. right? Do you agree? I agree, yes. Okay. So what I would suggest is having a list of the types of people for you to contact. 
Then from that, you can say, okay, I've got a list of 10 different types of people. Now from that list, I can have a sub list of all the different names, right? Because you need to know who to target. So you need a better way to target in ideal groups. You've got more people to go after that are exciting to you, that you can network with. So that's cross-pollination as well, but in a different way, right? You see where I'm going? So for you, I would say agents, reality TV stars, or even the people who aren't the star, but people who are on reality TV. How would you reach them, yeah. right? So I would go to agents, reality TV people, local celebrities, uh, local realtors, um, big lawyers, like large, you know, lawyers who are bit in big law firms yeah. in your area. Um, you know, and network with them. You want to start networking and connecting to people who are, you know, they're where they stand in the community matters to them. Politicians, all politicians want to write yeah. a book. Because part of being an authority is being an author. I mean, that's the root of the word. So my question so, with that is, you know, after I have these yeah. lists, what do I say to them? That seems to be where I get tripped up the most because I'm worried I'm going to come across as just, you know, that that timid door-to-door -door salesman. I just need to make this sale and we, you know, to be great. That's not who no, you that's are. not who I am. Um but I mean, I do have a sales script. Um, I read the book, uh, The Introvert's Edge by Matthew Pollard. And it talks about mm -hmm. creating a sales script specifically to help you, you know, really establish your authority, build that rapport, um, you know, show some compassion, but also to show what, um, you know, what the process would look like for you uh, in you know, mm -hmm. working with you. And so I do have a sales script for that. And it's great for for one on one. But, you know, if I'm going to write a, a cold email or I'm going to call them, you know, what should I be saying? What do you suggest there? You should be saying and 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 if you look at dms.blue i'm not saying my website is the most brilliant one in the planet okay it's not but if you look at my site you'll see very clearly what i'm trying to communicate to the potential con uh person the business owner i'm trying to communicate to them look i've got a background i can help you here's how i can help you make more money so that's what you want to say to them is Look, I can help you get your name out there more. I can help you find increased visibility and reach more of your ideal consumers or prospects. I can help you reach who you want to reach, increase visibility, and make more money. That's what they're thinking about. They're not thinking about, boy, it's going to be great to have a, a brilliant book with my name on it. That's ego. Yeah. That's ego, and you don't want to attract that person. You want to attract somebody who's saying, I need to make more money. I need to have increased visibility so I can get more speaking gigs. Mm -hmm. So you said increased so visibility, anybody, visibility uh, connect with your ideal clients, uh, make more money. That's right. You increased said that. and, yeah, absolutely. So who can benefit from that? Reality TV stars, a podcast guest, or, or a podcast host. So agents, because they're going to be looking for decent writers, agents, reality TV people, politicians, whatever you think about them, they all have to have a book. And most have to have multiple books. Okay. Um, what else? Marketers are always looking for decent writers that they can rely on. And who else? Agencies, because they're looking for what kind of relationship? White label relationships, remember? So that's key. You don't have to use the same term white label, but I would contact personally, I'd contact every freaking a, uh, agency in your state and in surrounding states. And I would try to get in a phone call with them or schedule a meeting with them or go to open houses that they might have. In a lot of larger cities, agencies will have open houses. And what we used to do in marketing is we call them farming events mm -hmm. or cattle yeah. calls. Yeah, cattle call was the term because they're farming out labor. They're looking for cheap labor, so they'll offer free beer and pizza. <laughs> and, they're, and they're hiring programmers. Now, you're not a programmer, but you provide something programmers can't mm -hmm. do. 
writing intelligent, engaging content. So the more conversational your content is, the more conversational you are, the more effective you're going to be. So when you write your emails to these people or these letters, write it in an engaging relaxed way like you would talk to them if you were at a pub or something. You know, hi, my name's Kyle. This is what I do. I have like 20 years experience doing this, working with game changers in the industry, whatever experience you've got. And I work with game changers in the industry and I help them get more leads more often and make more money. If this is of interest to you, give me a call or go to this quick link and let's schedule time to talk. Get a URL redirected Calendly or something that you know can work and and send it. All right. And, it, and if I use any technical jargon that doesn't make sense to you, ask me. Well, I've I've noticed on your site, DMS Blue, you have everything for your podcast right there to set up, you know, the, the date and time um, and then some questions uh, and contact information. Um, what is the service that you use for that? Calendly. Oh, it's Calendly? Is that like a plugin that you can use? And again, that's a technical term. We don't we want to stay away from technical terms because people will zone out. Their eyes will roll up in their into their heads like poached mm-hmm. eggs. Don't ever talk about how to with any client ever. But uh C A L E N D L Y. Mm-hmm. They have a free version that you can use or a premium version. I like the premium version because some things I just, I, it's worth paying for. You can decide for yourself. But the Calendly, there's one called Booked In. There's one called C Vita or V Seed or something like that. They're all fine. They all have different little tweaks and whatever, and you can add them to your site. And if you need help with that, I can help okay. you. Hint, hint, hint. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. I mean, the value of what you do is incredible. Mm. So it's just reaching the people who need and value what you can do. I mean, if you told me, David, I'll help you write an e- you know, a book or something, man, I'd take your site and I'd completely rip it apart and redo it for, for uh, a, you know, a, a good book. So that, and that's another thing that you could promote to help you build things if that's something you're interested in Fair doing. Percent, yes. <laughs> you know? So, uh, just saying, hint, hint. <laughs> if you can hear I'm writing that, it down right um, now, okay, so I don't forget. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me know when to resume. Okay. All right, got it. But, yeah. Yeah, and you can go to Bitly. What is it? B-I-B, B- just Google yeah. Bitly. And they have URL, what's called a URL redirect, where it's a really, really short domain or website name for a really long freaking one. So instead of, and and you could do it with Calendly, you can make it really short, calendly.com slash Kyle. Go to that URL and you can schedule a consultation with me that could be 15 Mm -hmm. minutes or half hour. And then you can set it up like that and just say, hey, go to calendly.com slash Kyle and you can book a free consultation with me to see if we're a good fit. That's what you want to give people. It's short. It's easy. It's easy to remember. They can go to that and they can book a free phone consultation with you. That's no longer than 15, 20 minutes to see if you're a good fit for them. So the question is, will you do it? I will. Um, definitely. We don't know. You okay? <laughs> the, 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 other, only, uh, the only caveat list- I'm putting in there is because I'm going to be leaving on vacation next week. So I will say yes. It just may not okay. get done right now. <laughs> yeah, you'll do it when you feel the need. When you feel that that you know somebody giving you the goose or you know or giving you that buzzer that you, you're motivated mm-hmm. to do it. So I get that you're going on a vacay, and that, that's great. I hope you have a good good time, and you're safe, and you have a great time. So here's some other ideas I have for you that I would recommend. And I'll just go down my list for your website. And again, if you don't know how to do this stuff, just be honest and just say to yourself, I don't know how to do it. I'll ask Dave to help me. Okay. And I'm happy. I'm happy to follow up on this. Um, Okay. Targeted SEO. So that's where you, you got to go to Google and you know, budget an hour to go to Google and just look up. If you look up Ghostwriter, 
how many pages of results are there typically with Google? And this is SEO. So when people say, well, what is SEO? SEO is your ranking in Google search results. Okay. In a nutshell. So you go to Google, you look up a term. If you get five or more pages, then it's a popular term. You're, you may or may not be able to get to the top of that. If it's five or more pages, it's popular, it's worth pursuing. If there are fewer than five pages or fewer than three pages, it ain't worth your time. There's not enough market. Move on. If you see five pages of results or more, I'd say five to 10 pages of search results, it's possible that you could get to be number one there. And it's worth looking into. If it's more than 10 pages of search results, the odds are it, there's just too much competition. Move on. So go to Google and look up ghostwriter and just see, are there a lot of ghostwriters? Yeah. Um, are there yeah, other terms? I just plugged it in and are there's there uh, ghost- 30 million hits. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot. So now what you want to do is look up in your city, are there the same number of results? You said you're in uh, we're Austin. San Antonio. So go to Google, type in San Antonio Ghostwriter. How many results do you see? Is it more than five pages? If it's more than five pages, then you could get to number one. If there's more than 10 pages, we don't really know. You got to look at the results and see, is this worth pursuing for you? Those particular terms. So go to Google, look up San Antonio Ghostwriter. um, Just see what the results are. And if it's worth for you, worth it for you to be a targeted local SEO guru guy. So you want to look at the SEO um, and kind of make notes on that. And and you can, if you want, you know, I'd be happy to give you my feedback on that. Um, How you onboard new clients. I would want to look at how you onboard. And obviously we don't have time to get into that right now, but I'd like to, I'd like you to look at, how you onboard new prospects or new clients for you. Is the process clunky? Is it awkward for you? Does it need to be refined? How many steps are in that process? Has it broken down from time to time? Or does it work flawlessly? That's what I want you to look at. If the answer is sometimes it's broken down or I feel it's too clunky, then it's something that we would need to look at and try to refine and make it as flawless as possible. So the fewer steps, the better, the simpler it is, is the better. Okay. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Um, I would want to look at, do you have a marketing plan for you as a, a ghost writer slash content marketer? Um, If you don't, then I have a workbook I'd be happy to send you. You can just remind me and I'll send it to you free of charge, no uh, strings or, or or jerk moves or anything like that. I'd be happy to send awesome. it to you, okay? Thank you. Yes, please. Um, I never say no to a free okay. book. Yeah, well, I never say me. no to a free book. <laughs> and feel free to improve it if you think you can. But you got to email me and remind me or else I'm not going to remember. So that's the onus is on you. Um I mean, you got to ask. I'm not going to remember, you know, to go and email Kyle the book. If you remind me, I'll be happy to send it to you. And that's for anybody out there, web land or or podcast land. If you email me at dms at dms.blue, I will send you a copy of my workbook for developing a marketing plan. Um, If you send me spam, I will delete it and I will block you. So please don't do that. But if you ask me, hey, look, here's I'm really sincere, really serious. I'll be happy Mm. to send it to you. Mm. Okay. Um. Let me see what else here. Um, Your contact form on your site is actually important. I want you to look at how people can get a hold of you on your site. Um, You want your phone number, your email to be featured prominently so people can get in touch with you ASAP very easily. That doesn't mean that you should give them your home phone number, okay? Because you'll get spammers and people telemarketers calling you. If you don't already have it, you can get a free phone number from Google Voice that you can use. Um, oh, let me scratch my ear here for a minute. 
but you can set it up for free. I have a Google voice number. People call 424 David 01 constantly every day and they hang up and they don't leave a message and I just delete it. It's, it's a waste of time for everybody, but they do it anyway. And, um, but anyway, go to Google voice and get a free phone number. If you haven't already done it, don't tell people it's your Google voice number, just set it up. So it, it gets your voicemail. And I went to Fiverr and got an announcer to do a really, really nice, you know, you called the offices of David, please leave your message after the tone. If they're serious, they'll leave a message. If they're not, then just delete it. So use that, use an email address. You can go to proton mail or something. If you get a lot of spam, and you can really block them if they send you repeated spam. Um, and, and it really, I mean, I'm sure you have a professional email address. Obviously, you don't want something like juicytushy.com <laughs> or something, you know, or what oh, I saw one, it was like, um, you know, uh, Dave and Dave and bro or whatever, Gmail or whatever. It doesn't sound no. professional. If your website is, you know, ghostwriter.com, then your email address should be info at ghostwriter.com or hello at ghostwriter.com. It shouldn't be butterfly love zebra Gmail or some crazy shit like that. And I'm just saying that I know you already know that, but some people don't. Okay, so you want your phone number and your email address to be prominently at the top of your site, have, you know, a form that asks them relevant questions. And if they don't answer the questions, you just freaking delete it. Don't waste your time with people that won't answer questions or play games because they're telemarketers or spammers. Um, I want you to look at yourself in a different way. And I want you to look in the mirror at yourself. And I'm being dead serious now. I'm not Marianne Williamson. I want you to look in the mirror and say, what I do has value to marketers, to decision makers, to CEOs, to celebrities. And I want you to write a book for yourself on how you provide value to these people and why you do it and how you can help the average business owner who has these needs, That's, that can be a long-term project for you, but I want you to think about it because writing that book, A, gives you a mm. book and something to market and makes you an expert, but it also is going to give you a lot of rehearsement. That's not a real word, but it's going to give you a lot of rehearsed marketing collateral for you to say, so you're more confident when you market yourself and when you mm -hmm. talk to people. Yes, you get it? Yes, Are you going to do it? All right, good. Now, another thing I want you to think of is I really want you to think about teaching a course for writers. Every city that you live in and every state in America has writers workshops, has writers groups. Many of them charge, make more money doing what you enjoy doing, charge. One of the things that I did when I was in between jobs at agencies, I would go to meetup.com and I have mixed feelings about too. meetup. Yeah. So I'm not saying, yeah. So there's pros and cons. And what I would do is I'd go to meetup and I would create an event on a holiday weekend. And it only worked on weekends and it only worked at certain times. It didn't work all the time, but I would create a four hour boot camp. And I'd say for four hours, I'm going to teach you how to create a professional agency level website in four hours or less. Ninety nine, ninety nine, And I would fill the room. And I, I mean, let, let's get real. If I didn't meet my quota of people, I wouldn't do it. I'd cancel it. And I would refund the money. I mean, if two people signed up, screw it. I'd refund the money and forget it. Wash my hands of it. And I would do it at a library conference room because the librarians don't know and they don't care. Don't tell them you're doing it. You're not supposed to charge for events at a library, which is totally ridiculous and counter small business. But don't tell them. Get a conference room at a library or some other place and just don't tell them what you're doing it for. It's just say you're having a seminar or something for people you know or whatever. And uh, you have a, you know, a boot camp or a training event that you charge for. And I would... Fill the room to capacity, man. I get 50, 100 people showing up. They're all paying 100 bucks or whatever. And I pay the rent in one day wow. easily. 
So you do a four hour boot camp on how to build an agency level website in four hours or less, or learn WordPress inside and out in four hours or less. Now, yeah, I could have a sign in sheet. Yes, they all had to pay. I guess I'd get their email addresses. 99.9% of the time, you would never hear from these people ever again. Don't expect to, because you're looking for an alternative to basket weaving or something like that. You can email them, you can follow up with them, but if they're not interested, don't let it hurt your feelings. It's because they're just doing it for shits and giggles, like Austin Powers says. They don't see the business value of it. Some of them you may hear from again, but most you won't. All I mean, I did WordPress training boot camps for hundreds of people over the years, hundreds, and made a lot of money. I paid a lot of rent. I'd say I heard from maybe three or four of them. Most of them, they just disappeared into the ether. You never heard from them again. Their brilliant idea or their idea for a business, they would never do it. They just never get motivated. You never hear from them again. And it's sad, but that's reality. But some, you, two or three you might hear from if you do it for a prolonged period of time. But most are just going to have an idea for something. They'll never go take out a loan and really get serious about it. But the money is in you offering the classes and that you are an expert in. So the local rec center, the local parks and recreation department, um, go to meetup.com, teach a, 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 a ghost writing boot camp teach a course in writing your own biography, teach a course in writing fiction, and charge these people to come to each one. Meetup will let you charge. So if you don't charge, nobody will show up or they'll RSVP and not show up. So you've got to charge or don't do it. And then cross promote the hell out of it through Facebook and everything else. And create three groups that all point to the same place at the same time using different topics and you can make some money teaching these, these classes. Okay. But the people aren't going to be your ideal customers. They're not going to be a good fit for, for what you do. You can teach them and you can make some money doing it, but they're not ever going to write a book and they're not ever going to be a fit for a ghostwriter. That's still a great idea though. But I'm just saying yeah, that's, that's a way to make idea. money. <laughs> I never would have thought of that. Oh, of course it's a great idea. <laughs> I know. That's why you're on my podcast. So feel free to give me a good recommendation for my we'll website. We'll hint, hint. Um, and, I'll, and I'll ask you for it. Um, and you should too. You should do it for everybody you work with. Cross-pollination is the secret. Um, okay. So I'm just going to go through my list a little bit more here. So how you screen people is important. I don't know what you're doing or not doing. I have to look at your site. Um, but if you've got people bullshitting you and wasting your time, that's not good. It's not ideal. If you respond to RFPs, make sure that you have an automated template. I don't like RFPs because I think they are a tremendous waste of time. They're a cattle call. It's basically companies saying, we need somebody to solve a problem. We don't know what we need. Obviously, we can't solve it ourselves. We want the cheapest possible price we can get. We may or may not already have somebody in mind to do it. If they're a government agency, odds are they've already got somebody in line that they want to do it. And usually it's someone who's a politician or a friend of a politician or somebody that they know through some backdoor channel. I mean, that's what government agencies are, are famous for. So I don't even waste my time with it. Send them a, 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 an automated template where all you do is you go in and you change your name, you change a few things, and then you send it to them. The idea is to initiate dialogue so you can learn more about what they really think they need so you can really have an intelligent, you know, human conversation with them. Uh, but nobody can tell you how to solve a problem if they can't meet with you and they can't talk to you and they're ex expected to give you a quote. That's ridiculous. You know, how much is it? does it cost to fix my car? Well, you can't look at the car. One million dollars. <laughs> that's, that's what an RFP, right. That, but that's what the RFP process mm -hmm. is. So any anybody listening, I mean, if you have RFPs, it's a total freaking waste of time. It never works because you're asking people to give you a price quote on something that they're not allowed to know anything about. 
So I'll respond to an RFP, but I just give them a template that just says, here's my qualifications. Here's my experience. You know, if you're really interested in solving the problem, we should really do an intelligent adult conversation. Or I should say articulate conversation because adult people are going to think about I'm whispering things <laughs> or whatever. But you really want to get into a conversation about what are your objectives? We can meet these sales objectives and these quotas. And we can also use what I do to reduce operational overhead, cut redundancy, and bring in revenue. Is that something you're interested in? Because I can do it. And I've got the, you know, the references, I've got the, the case studies, I can back this up if you want to do this. Do you want to solve the problem today? Or do you want to fixate on cheap price and just keep it going? The choice is yours, Mr. Prospect or Miss Prospect. That's how you want to talk to people, but do it in a friendly way that is representative of Kyle and your unique mm -hmm. personality. But that's the conversation you want to have. So I told you about Meetup. I told you about RFPs. Um, I don't know how good RFP DB is, RFP RFPDB.com or other RFP databases. Personally, I wouldn't pay for okay. them. That's good to know. Um, until, you, until you know how good they are, because you can respond to 100 RFPs and never hear from anybody. And unless you know them beforehand, the odds are, you know, you're just, it's another cattle call. So I just send, I send the automated template and I ask him to, you know, can we have an intelligent adult conversation about achieving real business objectives and reducing overhead and increasing revenue? If you're interested in that, I know how to get it done. And that's the conversation you want to have. So I put that in the RFP responses and I suggest you do too. And I suggest that's what you talk about more than anything else. Um, let's see here. Yeah. And as far as who you should be pitching to and contacting, like I said, agencies, agents, publishers, people who have a need for what you do, not a want, not a passing interest, not a curiosity, or maybe one day when hell freezes over, I might want it or something. Mark Marketers, agents, agencies, publishers, digital marketers, people who, who need what you can do but can't do it, reality TV people who want to increase their speaking fees, politicians, Big shot realtors, big shot lawyers, any lawyer who has TV commercials, mm. go after them because they've got money to burn. Okay. I would have thought of that. And I, and I really, truly, I really, truly hope you do it. I can't make you do it, but I hope you do. Okay. Because you will see fruit from those efforts. Um, okay. Let me see. Uh, the third parties. Third party audience, yeah, bloggers or no, no, I wouldn't waste no, my time with that. Um, what I mean by, give me a second here. I'm switching out reading glasses while I'm <laughs> talking to you. Um, there's a thing called, and I haven't written about this yet. Um, I want you to look at how you're finding work online. I have a list on my site. If you go to dms.blue and you just type in the search box, freelance job sites. I wrote a blog post on freelance job sites that work, that are good, that get you out of this race to the bottom. How cheap can I get cheap crap type of mentality? I made a list of good job sites that you can use. Some of them you already may be familiar with, some you may not, and that's the whole point. And I and use these on a daily basis. So if I'm not going to networking events, if I'm not going to a conference, if I'm not speaking at a conference or event or chasing after my wife or something, then I do go to that my own list. I do go to my own list and I'll hit it every day. And I, so you might want to look at it, you know, okay. okay? Um, now, there's another thing. There's a thing called similar site search. And just Google the term. There's I have a list of similar site searches that I have to add, and I keep forgetting to do it. Um, but you just Google the term similar site search. And what I want you to do is make a list of third-party companies, 
There's one called Blog Mutt that I remember hearing about when I was in Denver. And I don't know how, I don't know how cool the company is or how great the company is or anything. Uh, Blog Mutt, let me see. I don't even know if they're still in business or not. Um, I see them listed on the Better Business Bureau website in Colorado. Blogmutt.com. Let me see. If he's still in business. Yeah, they're still in business. So you want to go to a company like Blogmutt, solicit them. You know, not like a, a woman of ill repute, <laughs> yes, but you know I what, what I mean, mean by solicit. Okay. All right. So solicit them, but write down and say, okay, whatever that you call this type of company, I want you to go to similar site search search engines and look up other third parties just like them. Yes. Get it? And look at what their SEO is. Blog and content writing services. Hmm. Maybe your SEO should be the same. I wonder. <laughs> hmm. I wonder. I hope Kyle's yes, writing, writing all this down because I'm, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I can't write and talk okay, at the same good. time. Good. I'll be quiet. You tell me when to start up again. Boy, I'm getting hungry now. Yeah. Which, by the way, thank you for for doing this on on Fourth of July. I know it's it's a holiday. Eh, I don't really. I've never. Well, you're welcome. I personally, I've never really gotten into the Fourth of July. I believe if people are really patriotic, they all need to come out and vote. They need to be politically active and represent people in whom they believe, and stop voting for seventy five year old millionaires. Um, but that's just sure. me. But anyway, all right. Yeah, when right. you're ready. Sorry. Okay, so I want you to do everything mm -hmm. that I'm saying, and um, th th I do think that those things will help you. I want you to find. And this might be difficult, but a, I, I don't know where you live, what it's like. So find professional associations and organizations that you feel a synchronicity for. And I want you to solicit them and ask them about giving a presentation specifically on how content marketing can help them make more money, reach more of their ideal customers, and reduce overhead. And I want you to make it happen. Now, obviously, you've got to put th together the presentation first. But find these associations and organizations. How are you going to find them? Google search, speakers, bureaus, Toastmasters, find them. Go after them like a psycho <laughs> with a switchblade. Okay? Yes. All right. If you make it that, if you look at it like that, you'll find them. That's one thing about psychos. They always find a way to get done what they want to get done because they're very, very focused and very deliberate. Nothing else matters to them. They will not eat food. They will not drink. They won't sleep. They're focused on one thing only because it really matters. I'm not saying you should be a psycho, but, you know, just say, look, this is, I, this matters to me enough yeah, that I'm going to have to do it. It's the motivation that we're going for. Be, be motivated like yeah. the psycho. Right. <laughs> right. Drink the caffeine, make the list, get up and go to the list, you know, and, and I know it's rough, especially being a parent, you know. And, and you can work in your office if you have an office and, and get your, your kids in there with you. Hey, daddy's got work he's got to do. Um, I really, you know, I really love you a lot. Please come into the office and maybe you can do your homework or you can doodle or draw or something while I'm working in my office. You know, my wife will come in and she'll work with me while I'm in my office and I'll go and visit her in her little office and I'll go in there and work on stuff. I'll, I'll go in there and lay down on the floor while she's working on her stuff. You know, just so we can keep each other company. Okay. I never thought of that. Okay. Yeah. You got to find a way to do what you want. If it matters, gosh darn it, do it. So, yeah, she'll come. My wife will come in here and she'll eat meals while I'm talking to people on the phone and whatever. And she'll even laugh at me and everything. And then she'll get up and walk out or whatever, you know. Um Okay, but I want you to target associations and professional organizations and have a presentation ready to go 
on how they can make more money, reduce overhead operations and work more efficiently and make more money and increase revenue using content marketing. This could be very appealing to people who care about making money. Believe it or not, not everybody cares <laughs> about making money. They might say Man. they do, but they don't. They, you see what matters to them in their actions. Realtors, big shot lawyers who spend money on, on commercials, professional associations. And if you get one person, mm -hmm. then it's worth it. I'll never forget, I gave a presentation on digital marketing to a group of private investigators. And three years later, this is true. Well, three years later, the organizer for it contacted me. And she said, I I've tried doing it myself for years now. Wix and Weebly and Squarespace and Vistaprint and WordPress.com and, and every cheap free crap thing I could find. And they all look like grocery lists. Nothing goes well. Nothing ever shows up on Google. People look at my website and they laugh. It never works. I'm not taken seriously by clients who want to take me seriously. I need to be taken seriously because I'm a freaking private investigator and I need a professional website to look like my peers. You know what? I tried to do it myself for three long years. I'm willing to pay you a reasonable amount to have you do it for me because I remember your presentation and how serious you were about the value of this and how it could literally transform businesses. Now I get it. I'm willing to pay you. And that was like 10, 15 years ago. And she's been one of the sweetest clients I've ever had. She has been paying me my monthly maintenance fee for years now. And I made more from those ma monthly maintenance fees than I ever made from many other clients. So you see where I'm going, right? So I want you to speak at professional associations about what matters to them using your area of expertise. Will do. do yes, I do. Do you feel me, sir? And when you post to social media, I want you to use hashtags that are relevant to you. Only be talking to people who can freaking matter. CIO, mm -hmm. CTO, CEO, CFO, people who have a need for what you do. Uh oh, C T O okay. C C E O yeah. or CMO. Do you? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, is the Chief CMO marketing too? Good idea. Yes. yes, great idea. We'll do. I wrote that that list down so I don't forget. Okay, and let me see here. Okay, another thing that has nothing to do with writing at all. Look at doing voiceovers on Fiverr and up yours work because if it brings in money, it's worth pursuing. But you got a good radio voice. You could do no. voice messages for Thank people you. when you're I literate. appreciate it. I did look into doing okay. audiobook narration. And I'm not saying no, that to thing. butter you up either. I'm happily <laughs> married. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, okay. I did look into audiobook narration and I spoke with a, a narrator here in San Antonio and he said it took him years to make that get off the ground and, and get paying money. True. That's yeah. Him. So it's, it's one of those yeah. things like, where should I be putting my focus? And if, if Fiverr works, if I can get some quick Put, quick work off of that, I'd, I'd say it's worth it because. Listen, let me tell you, I hired somebody on Fiverr to do the intro for my podcast. Okay. You're Listen. listening to Blue Monday, the podcast for. I hired him because I wanted a hip young kid to do my intro. If I knew you on Fiverr and you were there, I would have hired you to do it. I hired a woman to do the voice for my voice message because I wanted someone who would just freaking do it and not try to charge me an arm and a leg for copyright infringement and all this other crap. So I paid somebody to, on Fiverr to do it. Put an ad on Fiverr. If you never hear back from it again, fine. But it takes you 20 minutes to put the gig on Fiverr and be done with it. It puts you, you, it takes you five, 10 minutes to put the gig on Fiverr. If you get 20 bucks a week worth of money doing it, it's, it's an extra 20 bucks in your pocket. You know what I mean? If you can do it in five, 10 minutes and get it done, do it. That's how I look at it. And, and you should, and just do it as uncomplicated as possible. Don't try to charge people an extra 20 for copyright or for commercial rights or do this for whatever. 
hey, hey, give me this and I'll do the voice for you. Five bucks, whatever you want to charge. I speak English very coherently. I understand English. I can read and write. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. Many, many times I've gone on Fiverr to get people to do voice voiceovers for me. And I've had to go back and re get refunds and, ex and everything because they wouldn't do it or the English was all broken or, or lousy or whatever. No fault of their own, but it's my fault for hiring the person in the first place. So I would tell you to go do it. Audiobook narration, a voice messages, podcast drops, whatever you want to call it. But you could you could put up five or six gigs in 20 minutes and be done with it and see if you get some money from it. That's, again, cross-pollinating. If it can bring in money, that's what it's about. So um, as far as posting to social media, <sighs> consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. Use Buffer or Hootsuite. And if they have a free version, use it. Okay. Don't waste your time doing it without one of these All services. Right. Okay. I will definitely figure that out then. I'm just... I'm just no, trying no, no, to I'm, help I'm not, you. I'm not being sarcastic. I it's, it's I'm writing it down. So I want to make sure that I'm maximizing my no, time as well. Yeah. But I mean, the, the, you know, emotionally it's like, well, it's not really exciting to do, but you know, it's like if I'm on Facebook or Twitter, I can tell you nine times out of 10, mm -hmm. it ain't me. I used buffer or toot sweet or whatever to I'll sit down once a week and I'll spend a couple hours filling up what should go to all these social media outlets. Now, if people respond to me and it's intelligent and articulate, yeah, I'll get back to them. That's great. If, if nobody responds, I'm, well, you know, what do I, you know, come on. Or if you respond in some ignorant way, I'm not going to respond at all. Um, but I'll get on there, I'll spend a couple hours, one day a week, and post to every social media outlet humanly possible. And I'll send out my videos, my podcasts, my uh, blog posts, the infographic images I do, on and on and on, and just fill it all up once a week or once a month. And then you're done. And then I'll get on social media and check on how things are doing. And in that way, it appears that I'm very dominant or extremely active but I'm really not. I just sit down one day a month and fill the, the stuff up and then I'll just go check on it. So I do it in a very organized, deliberate way. And that's what I want you to do. Um, and then also, let me see here. Yeah, and as, as far as actually you going to meetup groups, don't go trying to promote what you do. I would tell you only go to BNI or a chamber of commerce or associations where professional, serious, committed adults are going. Okay. If they don't charge, don't waste your time. And BNI, I've heard people say that it's great. I've heard other people say that it's a cult. I don't know. I haven't been to one yet, but I would tell you be selective, very surgical about where you go. So, you know, for me now, I don't go to meetup groups anymore. I'm completely burned out from them. I will have a meetup group where I charge to um, give workshops or courses or seminars. And I might go to a meetup group as a speaker, but I'm not going to go pay the money to organize because I just, unless I'm giving a, a seminar workshop or I'm going to charge because too many people RSVP and never show up or blow it off and they're scavengers or, you know, hiding under some rock or the next Jeffrey Dahmer or something. I just don't do it. It's if it's free and accessible to everyone, mm -hmm. it's not who you want to attract. You want to attract people who are serious, committed and really have a need for what you can do. And are like, Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Okay. So and look at what type of social media you're putting out there. For you, well, you're a multifaceted dude, but obviously mm -hmm. blog posts first, maybe podcast second. Because, you know, it, for you, it's all about writing and, yeah, ebooks. 
an, a free ebook giveaway promoting your services and how you can make more money, reduce overhead, and help people get more customers using the power of content marketing and ghostwriting. You need to have a free ebook giveaway that people can sign up, give you their information, and get the download. Now you know they're interested in what you can do, and you've got an ideal prospect to cultivate, right? So if you don't already have that, do it. And the other thing is, if you look at Craigslist, that's on my list anyway, so I'm not going to get into it. But that's on my list of freelance sites to go to. And I do it in a very quick way, very quickly. I go to all the major cities. I look for very specifically the types of jobs that I want under the categories. And if I don't see them, I don't get bummed out. I go back the next day or a couple of days later. And I send an automated form email. Hi, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so. I noticed your email about this. Here's my qualifications and my experience. I can help you make more money, reduce overhead, increase revenue, stop wasting time on things that don't work. If you're interested in making more money and getting more customers using this service, I can help you. Here's a link to schedule a phone call with me if you want. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Send. If they're not interested, they won't respond. All right. And I am. Am I going to be getting this recording too? Because even though I've written down notes, I'm sure I've missed something. I don't want to. I don't want to lose anything. As, as yes, long sir. as you don't screw up the podcast, yes, yeah. Sir. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a <laughs> that's a bad answer on my part. Bad podcast host. Um, no, yeah. what I mean is don't, Definitely. when we're done recording, don't, don't do anything right away and it should download and I'll send you the links. And I do seriously mean it when I say keep in touch. I'm not saying that to be, uh, you know, BS or I really do mean it. I really do sincerely uh, want to help the people I talk to and offer to help. I really do mean it. Um you know, if people aren't going to listen or they push back or no, I'm committed to trying to do everything myself for eternity. That's where you get the resentment and you're like, you know what? Never mind F this, you know, but I really do mean it. If you send me uh, an email following up, I will write you back and I've done it. My first podcast was with uh, Clarine um, and she's already written me back several times and I've offered to help her in ways mm -hmm. that she wasn't interested in, and that's okay. That's cool too. And if you're listening to this, Clarine, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, you know, I do offer to help people. And if they're interested or they get back to me, awesome. I'll follow up with them. You know, and I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll tell you, yes, I can do this. No, I can't do that. If you want to work out some kind of uh, an agreement or whatever, I'm always open to that. And every and every business owner should be. Everybody that I've done a podcast with should be getting in touch with me and saying, David, I had a fun podcast with you. We should follow up and see how we could help each other. Some people do, some don't. And those that don't, they're, they're not seeing the big picture. They're not thinking long term. And that's okay because you can't, you know, you sure. lead a horse to water, sure, but sure. you can't make him drink. You know? Yeah, Clarine has been great in keeping up with me and following up and things. So, you know, uh, I want to encourage that. The others, not so much, but maybe they'll hear this and go, oh, I should contact mm -hmm. Dave. Hey, maybe you should. It's on you. Well, uh, it's getting you know. close to three. Uh, I know we have our podcast at 3.30. So I just, I just got to get a couple of things ready for that before. Ooh, and that's a kick in the head. We'll talk about that after this podcast. But do you have any questions for me before we sign uh, off? And I would I say no, but I know sunset. I'm going to have one the moment I, I sign off. And so I'll probably be sending you an em email anyway, because I'll, I'll need clarification okay. on something that I just I remembered after the fact. Yeah, and to follow up, of course. And to follow up. And keep in touch. Yeah. So, okay. Tell all the good folks listening how to keep in touch with you, what you do. Well, I'm Kyle Worker, the Certified Ghostwriter. If you're looking to, of course, reduce overhead for your company, get your message out there, connect with your ideal client, and of course, make more money, uh, then write a book and get in touch with me to figure out how to do that. And you can get in touch with me uh, 
either by phone call, 210-816-2441, or reach out to me at weckerlywriter.com. That's W-E-C-K-E-R-L-Y-W-R-I-T-E-R.com. And you can find out how to connect with me there. All right. Oh, yes, of course. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and Facebook. Um, You can either search Kyle Weckerly or Kyle Weckerly Ghost, uh, and you'll you'll usually be able to find me. That's usually my handle that I use uh, on those sites. But Kyle, hmm. I do. Thank you, you for asking, David. I also am the host of the Career Challenges Podcast. Wow. And if you're interested in that, just search careerchallengespodcast.com right. and that'll take you straight there. And you can find the available episodes. And if you're interested in becoming a guest, there's ways to do that too. Just uh, look for the link, Becoming a Guest. And that'll be streamlined soon, just based on what David and I have been talking about. But if even if you want to do that now, just go check that out. But that podcast is for uh, talking about le- learning lessons the hard way overcoming professional uh, hurdles on our professional journeys uh, mm. as you know we were working on uh, getting into the career we want to do and I talk a lot with career consultants uh, coaches people like David uh, and we do a lot of that uh, back and forth mm. is really more about sharing stories uh, and sharing that valuable valuable knowledge so it's it's a lot of fun I have a lot of fun with it I have a question about that I have a question about that too now that you mentioned that are there any podcasts out there for uh, yeah, about, Jeffrey about Mangus? He has one called Ghostwriting USA. Uh, he's pretty consistent with it. I'm trying to get him on my podcast. Um, since it's the summer, I'm I'm sure it's uh, busy. Yeah, and I would like to get on it on his. But that's the thing. First, I offered it for them to come onto mine, and that's how I can get my foot in the door to get onto theirs. Um, mm. Derek Lewis, he runs mm. the business book podcast and mm. he is a ghostwriter as well but he talks more with industry professionals in the uh, publishing industry so not specifically ghostwriting i mean he'll talk about it but mm. really it's more about the publishing stuff so you should really t- so you should really target yeah. the people and that that's, he that's has another, on his show one too, of the huh? other many things i'm trying to do when i have time so maybe it, okay but but you don't have to do them all at once. You organize, you put in, you put it all together in the list of priorities. And then you go through your list of priorities. So you have all these different things that you could do, but you don't need to do them all at once. You can't. So you put it all in an organized list based on priorities. And then you go through it. What's my number one priority? Is it getting a job as a ghostwriter first? And then trying to connect in my spare time, or is it, ex, you know, so you prioritize it and then you go through that list. Okay. And that's what I use Kanban flow for. Um, so, th- and I also have regular paper notebooks all over my office that I use for as well. So, um, but it's very important not to feel overwhelmed. There's what you could do, what you should be doing, what you can do. But you've got to organize into a very structured list and not be let, let, let it be overwhelming. So that's really important that I say that. So um, I had a, a lot of fun talking very to much. you. Yes, do you feel I that have. I was helpful to you? How many pages of notes do I have? I have three full pages of notes and then a little bit more of, uh, of just our conversation of things you've talked about. From that what? list we just went through. Nearly everything you said, I was writing down something on that um, mm-hmm. and just other ideas that came up as we were talking. And so I have three three full pages of notes and then some and uh, a lot of action items I'm going to start working on um, as soon as I can. Okay. Yeah. And, but putting them together in a very deliberate, structured list based on priorities so you don't feel pulled into too many different directions and – Obviously, I'm not, you know, and and, and I really hope that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when you do do your work, it's something that you can have your kids in, you know, in the office with you working quietly while you concentrate. So it can also be time that the two of you can bond, um, you know, because what children want is not always necessarily doesn't have to be noise. Okay. It can just be with you. Yeah. You know, sometimes just being with you is enough. You know, and if they see you working quietly in an organized, deliberate way, they know it matters to you and they can actually talk to you about it gradually over time. 
So that's something, you know, that, that might make it a little bit easier to pal it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, dude. I am fired up and I hope you are too. Uh, this is David Summerfleck over at DMS.blue, Digital Marketing Strategies for Digital Marketing Success. Gosh darn it. So please visit me online at DMS.blue. It is a real website, a real website address. Type it into that little white address bar, DMS.blue, and you actually get solutions to real freaking business problems. How about that? You can call me at 424-DAVID-01. You can email me at DMS at DMS.blue. And I'll actually get back to you if you have real problems and real help, uh, you're in need of real help growing a real business. Um, so thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Kyle, for being such a, a great guest. Really? And giving wow. me my longest podcast ever. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, yes. I'm going to uh, – yeah. Who is that politician um, who uh, lost uh, the, the election? He's saying, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, was I Dean, Dean, Howard Dean, Howard Dean, God bless him. He's still active. He's a brilliant guy. <laughs> um, I shouldn't make fun of that. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to thank all my listeners to be on the D, the blue Monday podcast, go to dms.blue slash podcast, or go to dms.blue and just click on the podcast, uh, at, uh, logo at the very top in the menu and you can apply to be a guest too. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Kyle. Do not hang up and I'm going to do my outro. Okay. You've been listening to blue Monday, the podcast for about and by America's small business owners. If you like to be a guest, get help with your small business or listen to podcasts. As soon as they drop, Go to dms.blue slash podcast. Until next time.